Hi. Today, let's talk about a very influential figure of 20th century, George Orwell. George Orwell was an early 20th century writer who is best known as the author of, uh, well, you know, Animal Farm in 1984. I'm sure many of you are familiar with these works. He was a prolific writer who also wrote essays, novels, and non-fiction books. He is considered one of the most influential and insightful writers of the 20th century. Born as Eric Arthur Blair in 1903, Orwell adopted his pen name to protect his family's identity while he worked as a social commentator, journalist, and author. He passed away in 1950. His works continue to captivate readers and inspire discussions on politics, society, language, and the human condition. George Orwell had a brilliant mind. While not trained as a philosopher, Orwell's writings include many philosophical insights. His philosophical perceptions are relevant to both the pressing political and social issues and recent developments in knowledge. In this video, we'll discuss George Orwell, his legacy, and some of his intellectual views in political philosophy, epistemology, and philosophy of language. Before we start, I would like to say that Orwell was a writer and thinker of great literary merit whose tall shadow falls on literature, language, philosophy, and politics alike, as we just said. Orwell's insights about the connections between politics, thought, and language were ahead of their time. Political epistemology and political philosophy of language have only recently begun to emerge as distinct subfields within academic fields. And that, mind you, has a lot to do with Orwell's influence. So that's why I thought I should spell it out why Orwell's thoughts are worth deep consideration and thoughtful examination. In terms of personal life, Orwell was born in colonial India, where his English father worked for the British Civil Service. Thereafter, he was raised in England in a middle-class background. After completing his schooling, Orwell left for Burma, which is now Myanmar, where he worked for five years with the Imperial Police. So with his first-hand exposure to colonialism, Orwell became an anti-imperialist. He then resigned from the imperial police and returned to England to become a writer. Orwell's writing regularly mirrored his personal experiences which comprised his life among the poor in Paris and London. Then his experiences also comprised researching working conditions in northern England. He also fought as a volunteer soldier in the Spanish Civil War, and uh, he also worked to create World War II propaganda for the BBC. Orwell published Animal Farm in 1945. It was highly acclaimed right away and became a commercial success in the United States and the UK. Then he published 1984 in 1949, which was an even bigger success. Orwell died of tuberculosis seven months after 1984 was published. He was only 46 years old. Now let's talk about Orwell's political thinking, one of uh, the many dimensions of his personality and thought. Orwell's early writing focused on the subjects of poverty and imperialism. He stated that upper and middle class people typically misunderstood why people lived in poverty and what living in poverty was like. I think he had a point, a strong point. Orwell claimed that poor people were not poor because of any inferior qualities or moral character, but because of dysfunctional social and political systems that created unjust inequality. So what then happened was that Orwell began to hate imperialism. 
because he felt that both the oppressed and the oppressors were unfree under imperialism. The oppressed because foreign imperialist invaders subjected them to injustice. The oppressors because they were compelled into acting unfairly for the sake of keeping up appearances. Such oppressors also face significant social pressure to censor themselves by not criticizing a political structure that benefited their social group. I hope you'll agree that that is also true for many privileged classes, armies, clergies, ideologies, and other groups in today's world. Orwell's later writings turned toward the themes of socialism and totalitarianism among many others. He rebuffed capitalism in favor of socialism. For Orwell, a socialist government was one in which major industries were nationalized, income inequality was limited, health services were free, and quality education was available to all, regardless of social classes. Well, you can defer, but to his credit, Orwell distinguished socialism from Marxism and Soviet communism. More importantly, he pointed out that these things were sometimes incorrectly conflated with socialism. Orwell also repeatedly clarified that he was a democratic socialist committed to a socialist society that preserved people's freedom and autonomy. If there is one thing that Orwell hated, it was uh, authoritarianism. He was staunchly opposed to totalitarianism. He described totalitarianism as a specific kind of dictatorship that had not existed prior to the 20th century. According to him, totalitarianism was exemplified by an unrestrained desire of complete control and power for power's sake. Orwell viewed this desire for power and control as irreconcilable with a just governance system where law applies equally to everyone and thus limits even a ruler's power, whereas totalitarians will not tolerate limits on their power. Orwell described both Nazi Germany that had emerged from a democratic process and Soviet communism with, where there was no uh, democracy as totalitarian states. Let's look at Orwell's uh, political philosophy. So Orwell, as we saw, thought totalitarian rule entails grave epistemic consequences. Because totalitarian rulers want total control, they can't accept facts that conflict with their goals. As a result, totalitarians will say whether or whatever is required to preserve their power and will seek to convince people to give up on the concept of objective truth. You can say that some populist politicians may do the same in a democracy. Yes, but thanks to freedoms that democracy ensures, they can't stifle any narrative challenging their views unless we allow them to. We means people here. Uh, Orwell used the primary antagonist in 1984, O'Brien, to demonstrate how the totalitarian desire for control leads the totalitarians to try to subvert truth. Totalitarianism was not the only political threat to truth that Orwell was con concerned about. He also regarded what he termed nationalism as a threat to truth and to the development of justified beliefs. Orwell utilized nationalism as a technical term to represent the practice of making the advancement of a nation or other political unit one central concern. So he said that nationalists are intensely devoted to their political team and tend to view everything in terms of competitive prestige. So Orwell's description of nationalism has led the way for many contemporary descriptions of today's political left and right in the United States, in many European nations, and beyond. So nationalism for Orwell can be both positive and negative. 
positive nationalism focuses on promoting one's own political team. Negative nationalism focuses on denigrating a political team to which one is opposed. So the epistemic impact of nationalism on Orwell's account is that such political loyalty leads nationalists to falsify their evidence, often unconsciously, in order to preserve the belief that their political team is superior even when the facts are overwhelmingly against such a view. Orwell's insights can be stated in modern terms as making a case for the view that political partisanship leads to cognitive bias and the other way around cognitive bias also leads to, leads to a colored view and a political partisanship. Now, Orwell's view of language and literature, he believed that the development of politics, thought and language are all interrelated. Orwell thought that uh, it was important to write well because language wields influence on our thoughts and our politics. Orwell's desire to write well is not about the desire for grammatical perfection or for high flowing English or language. Instead, Orwell's main exhortation is uh, for language users to aspire to let the meaning choose the word and not the other way about. For instance, Orwell believed that we are inclined to pick the metaphors that first come to mind, but these metaphors often distort our ideas in inefficient ways. And this is precisely what led Orwell to work toward developing an art of political writing. Orwell thought that, in some sense, all writing is political and that all art is propaganda because all writing carries a political message, even if that message is just support for the status quo. So, as a result of that, Orwell regarded literature as a potential weapon against totalitarianism. So, let's briefly look at George Orwell's legacy before we close our discussion. As you may have Understood by now, George Orwell's legacy is profound and enduring. Some key aspects of it include the following. Number one, dystopian literature. So Orwell, as we saw, is renowned for his iconic dystopian novels, 1984 and Animal Farm. 1984 portrays a totalitarian society where the government exercises absolute control over its citizens. And Animal Farm is a political allegory crit critiquing the dangers of totalitarianism and corruption. So these books, as you know, have become classics and often cited when discussing the dangers of authoritarianism and the importance of preserving individual freedoms. Number two, his great legacy is his criticism of totalitarianism. Orwell's experience during the Spanish Civil War and witnessing the rise of totalitarian regimes like fascism and Stalinism deeply influenced his writing. Therefore, he used his works to expose the abuse of power, propaganda, and the erosion of truth in the face of authoritarian governments. His insights into the nature of political manipulation and oppression are is still relevant, very relevant today. Then his third legacy is the political and social commentaries that he left. So beyond his fiction, Orwell was a prolific essayist and journalist. His essays covered a wide range of topics, including class struggle, imperialism, literature, language, and social inequality. It's clear lucid writing style and willingness to challenge prevailing norms have made his non-fiction work valuable resources for understanding the complexities of the world. Then on fourth level of legacy, he had uh, a significant impact on language. His essay, Politics and the English Language, remains highly influential in discussions about clear and effective communication. He 
advocated for simplicity and precision in language to avoid the deliberate obfuscation often used by those in power or control to manipulate public perception. Then uh, another legacy was his uh, advocacy of free expression. He was a champion for freedom of expression and fought against censorship and propaganda. He believed in the importance of truthful reporting and the right of individuals to express dissenting opinions without fear of persecution. Another aspect of his legacy can be seen in popular culture. Orwell's ideas and concepts have permeated popular culture, not just uh, vocalism, but many at many levels, in many guises, and are referred in ver various forms of media, including movies, television, literature, music, you name it. You know, you have heard phrases like, uh, Big Brother is watching, or concepts like thought crime. All of these have become synonymous with surveillance and authoritarianism. And Finally, the most important part of his legacy is his influence on political thought. Orwell's work has been analyzed and interpreted by political theorists, scholars, and activists worldwide. His ideas have shaped debates on topics such as surveillance, privacy, freedom, and the nature of power in contemporary society. So. To sum it up, uh, George Orwell's legacy continues to resonate with readers and thinkers alike, offering timeless insights into the human condition. They serve as a reminder of the importance of vigilance in safeguarding democratic values and individual liberties, human rights. Be vigilant, be alive, be alert, and see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you.